Hey everybody, Brian again from Innisfil Creek Honey in our backyard in Barbados. Uh, getting ready today to uh, put together our uh, beekeeping boxes. So we have our uh, four deep boxes stacked there with everything we need uh, to put them together. We have uh, some glue, got to glue the joints together. Uh, I went to the hardware store, picked up some nails. Uh, these are a two inch uh, spiral nail um, and a hammer. Um, it's going to be different putting these together because uh, at home uh, I would start the air compressor up and use the uh, the nail gun. <laughs> uh, on Barbados, uh, an air compressor and a nail gun uh, are rare and expensive, very expensive. And to put together four deep boxes or, or, or whatever, it, it's not really worth it. So hammer, nails, and some glue. And we'll get those uh, deep boxes put together. So uh, follow me along. I'll show you how I put deep boxes together or how I used to. I think I, I, the last time I did this with a hammer and nails uh, was probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. <laughs> so uh, it'll might be an experience for both of us. Anyways, follow me along. I'll show you how to put some deep boxes together. Uh, and then we'll get them painted up. And hopefully by the time we're done, uh, they'll be nice and painted and pretty looking and all secure. Anyways, follow me along. So uh, we have our one box here. So there's uh, different sides to them. So we have two uh, long sides of our deep box. They all have these uh, nifty little finger joints on here. The, uh, and then we have our two short sides. And the two short sides have matching finger joints on them. Uh, when you're uh, putting your boxes together, you only get to put them together once. Uh, and if you do that really, really well, um, these boxes should last you uh, for 50 or 100 years. Um, in these finger joints, the first thing we do is uh, we get some glue. Um, so whatever type of wood glue you have at home, this is all I could find here. And the way I like to do it is I put a little dab in the middle. I put two frames together, or two boxes together like this, uh, of each side. I put a little dab in the center of each one of these little grooves. Then I get my finger and I smoosh that around, try to coat most of the surfaces so that we get a nice glue uh, layer, a thin glue layer um, on all surfaces. Um, the nails, we'll use nails to put it together, but this glue is gonna really sturdy it up um, and turn uh, it into one piece when we're done. So you wanna spend your time, make sure you get that glue smeared around quite nicely in all these joints. Then we will uh, flip it over to the other side, get more glue, uh, put that in between all these um, to get glue on all the surfaces. The uh, It's uh, kind of nice sitting out here on the back pad here uh, doing this. Other than I don't have a, a, a workbench here. A workbench would be nice, but uh, I guess a lot of people when they are a hobby beekeeper or an urban beekeeper, they're uh, doing with what they have. So uh, you're not going to go out and build a workbench or, or buy a workbench to put together a few boxes in your backyard. So working on the back pad here in a nice, uh, nice beautiful day isn't too bad. So here we have glue smooshed around all over the place on all of the joints and I've made sure to come up on the side of the joints there. Make sure I have a nice glue layer on them. Then I take the next bunch of frames. These are the, the, short, front, the short sides or the fronts and backs. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing on them. So I'm going to go in between all these finger joints here. Put a dab of glue in the, in the center of there and then smear that around on there. Um, and it's really just to make sure I have a layer of glue on pretty much every surface um, that's going to be touching any other surface so that uh, the joint um, that I'm going to create afterwards is going to be as strong as it possibly can be so it can last forever and ever and ever 
Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, putting together a deep box or any box. Um, and then in a year or two, it starts wiggling around. The joints give out and it starts wiggling around. So then we'll flip it over again to the other side. I'll get the glue again. Put a little dab on all of that. Smush it all around. And there, so I've coated all the sides, all the inside pieces of all joints, where all the joints are going to fit. Now we will uh, clean our finger off somehow. Um, as always, uh, Brian gets ahead of himself. Forgot to bring a rag in. So then we'll grab our other pieces. So we have our, our, our short piece and a long piece. And these finger joints all fit together. little bit of persuasion so they all fit together like this quite nicely okay you always want to make sure you have your handle holds on the outside of the box uh, I remember years ago uh, when we first started doing this uh, beekeeping supplies uh, we had a, a, a fellow irately email us that our bee boxes were uh, put together or manufactured incorrectly with all his handle holds were on the inside of the box. And I I almost couldn't reply because I, I was laughing so hard I didn't want to get insulted, but uh, I just thought, oh my gosh, uh, all you have to do is put the box together the right way. Uh, so now when people ask me how to put a box together, I tell them, if you can't figure out how to put a deep box together, you probably shouldn't be a beekeeper. So now, uh, these boxes here are the U.S. boxes. Um, probably Man Lake, I'm guessing, is who they came from just by looking at the way they do them. Um, and they are a three-quarter inch. So the thickness here is three-quarters inch. In Canada, we tend to use uh, seven-eighths um, wood in all our boxes. So this is a three-quarter inch. Um, it's a very hard pine. So the, the U.S. boxes are made from this really, really hard southern pine. Um, and... They drill, little, they drill little holes in all of the tabs. So you have a pilot hole to put your nail in so it doesn't split. So all of these tabs have a little hole already pre-drilled in all of them so that you can put your nail in um, and the wood doesn't split when you uh, put it in. So, so now we put the, it together as best we can, line it up square. And now I'm gonna take this nail, put a nail in each one of these tabs, starting off slowly, making sure it's straight, and pound it down pretty hard. Then I'll take another one, go to another one of these little tabs, put the, put the nail in the, the little pilot hole, make sure it's nice and square, and put it in. So I put two in, here and here. And there's a little bow here where the boards aren't fitting together perfectly. There might be a little bit of warp in there. So I'm going to flip it on its side now and try to get that bow tightened up. So uh, tapping it in, pounding the nails down, and then going along and doing that. Um, and as we do this, we're going to put a nail in every single one of these tabs this way and every one of these tabs that way. Um, seems really overkill because in each corner we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nails going into it. But if we don't put that many nails into it, eventually that, that uh, corner will uh, start to wiggle. So um, I'm gonna go along and start putting this whole box together. And when I get done it all together, I'll, I'll be back. So we, uh, we have our box together. We have nails and nails and nails and nails and nails. In every tab, holding every tab together, we have glue in all of those joints that is going to harden up and 
make that joint homogeneous. So it'll be a, a solid piece of wood, basically. Um, the nails will reinforce it until it uh, the glue uh, cures. Um, and the, and the uh, nails will add to the strength. Um, so we got the box together. Now, one thing I like to do after I get my box together is you want to make sure it's square. Um, because once that glue dries, um, it's never going to move again. And if you have a crooked box, um, when the glue drives, you have a crooked, crooked box for the rest of your life. Um, so what I like to do is grab my bottom board. So there's one of the bottom boards there. And then I stick my box on top of the bottom board because the bottom board is square. I line the back edge up. It's going to be hard to do with, with uh, one hand. I'm going to line the back, back edge up. I'm going to look at the sides of it and then I'm going to wiggle it a little bit to make sure that it fits perfectly square on that uh, bottom board and if it's an off a little bit at the front um, I can just grab this and push side to side it'll twist it a little bit so so there we go we have it on the bo on the bottom board the seams seem to be working pretty good so we have that one box together. Looks pretty nice there. Um, and now I'm gonna gently pick that up, set it off to the side. And then I'm gonna put the other uh, three boxes together. So once I get the three boxes together, I'll be back and uh, we'll talk about painting our beehives. So you'll see here, I have uh, the second box I put together. The first box, which is square. Um, and I have the back edge lined up really smooth here. And if we follow it up to the front, you can see how the front edge is out a little bit. So, which means this top box is a little bit askew. So this top board has to go that way. So this thing has to go that way. So I'm gonna take this box, stand it up on the corner, then hold it with my foot and try to pound on the top corner there to get it to move over slightly to try to make it more square. So there we go. We have our uh, four deep boxes put together. Uh, I've got them all stacked on top of each other. After I squared them up, make sure they sit really nice. You can see we have nails in every single one of those little tabs uh, to make sure and on both ways so that to make sure that those joints are as strong as they physically can be. Um, now, uh, the glue's still wet, so I'm gonna let them sit there. For a few hours, uh, let that uh, glue cure up. And then, I'm gonna come back and uh, start painting them. Um, and we'll talk about painting a little bit. Anyways, uh, we'll see you back in a little bit. There's my little helper there. Little Bootsy came out. Little Bootsy came out to help me paint uh, boxes. She actually thinks for some reason there's food in everything I do. Um, anyways, this is our paint. We're getting ready to paint. Um, I'm going to paint uh, two boxes and one bottom board. I'm going to paint the, the three pieces. I have two different colors, so I'm going to paint three of the pieces, so two boxes and one bottom board blue. Then I'm gonna paint the other two boxes and the other bottom board, this beautiful yellow. And these are the uh, Barbados flag colors. So I went up to the hardware store and said, hey, do you have the color tones for the Barbados flag? And they said, yes, we do. So they pulled up the exact colors that are the national colors for the flag, which is pretty cool. So we're going to do some Barbados themed uh, hives here. Um, so I'm going to paint two boxes. Um, when I paint my boxes, if I'm painting two or ten, what I do is I stack them on top of each other. I stack them on top of each other. I try to make sure the seams are lined up pretty flush. Um, and then I paint them as if they were one big box or one wall. Um, it's a lot easier that way. I have it set up on some little bricks down at the bottom to lift it off the, the cardboard a little bit. 
and then just stack them up. So if you're doing two or three or four or five, just stack them up in, in, in a big pile. Uh, and then you can go along and paint the surfaces of all of them um, all the way around um, without having to do them all individually. Um, I find that works out a lot easier. Uh, when you're painting also, it's not really uh, important to paint the top edge or the inside at all. The bees will look after the inside and the top and bottom edges are protected by either the box that's underneath or on top or by the lids or bottom boards. So there's really no need to uh, paint the uh, edges. And you'll also scratch these edges up a lot with your hive tools and that when you're working anyway. So if you were to paint the tops and bottom edges, um, you're just really gonna scrape a bit of that paint off every time you get in there and try to clean up your boxes. Uh, I've also noticed that if you paint the edges or get paint on the edges, um, that paint, even though it hardens up and even after a week or two of it being hardened, um, you stack two boxes on top of each other with a bit of paint, dry paint on the edges, and it actually does glue itself back together a little bit. So that's paint never really uh, cures 100%, I don't think. It stays a little bit sticky. Um, so anyway, so we, we've got these stacked up. We're going to paint them. I'm going to paint my bottom board uh, last. Uh, I'm going to have to do two uh, sides to it, so I'm going to paint one side, and then I'll flip it over after it dries and paint the other side. Uh, the bottom board um, is one thing that it's, it's always advisable to paint the whole thing. Uh, bottom, the bottom of the board that's facing the ground, the surface facing up inside the hive. Um, if you don't paint this surface here that's going to be at the bottom of the beehive where the bees are going to be climbing in, going up into the hive. Um, all the debris up in the hive throughout the lifetime of the hive will fall down and land on this bottom board. Um, and if you don't coat this with something, a lot of that debris can start um, rotting the bottom board a little bit. So uh, we want the boards to uh, last a long, long time, especially considering this bottom board, I think was $62 Barbados something silly like that uh, for a hunk of plywood and three little sticks glued to it. Um, so we want to make sure that this board <laughs> lasts forever. So I'm going to be painting both sides really well. Two coats on each side. The boxes, I'm going to put two coats on the outside edge uh, in blue. And then these ones, I'll put two coats of yellow on the outside of everything. So anyways, when, I, when I'm done that, we'll, we'll come back, take a look at my box and see how pretty they look. Well, there we go, guys. Uh, we have the boxes painted up. Two good coats of paint on those boxes. Um, and then I took the boxes and I uh, put them uh, sort of cockeyed to each other um, so that the uh, top edges aren't touching all the way around. So I sort of spread them out a little bit so that they, uh, as the paint dries and cures, it doesn't glue the boxes together with the paint. Uh, and then I'll leave them there for a good two days um, or more. Uh, paint takes a while to cure, so it might feel dry on the outside, um, but it doesn't cure for 24 to 48 hours um, after it dries. So I'll leave that sitting there for two or three or four days uh, just to make sure that uh, the paint is cured. Uh, and then when I stack the boxes together, they, uh, they don't glue. So there's my boxes. Beautiful Barbados flag yellow. Barbados flag blue um, and that's it for this video uh, the next video the next thing I have to do is make a lid for the beehives so I uh, was scrounging around the property and beside the shed found this old piece of uh, three-quarter inch plywood so I'm gonna take that uh, old piece of three-quarter inch plywood clean it up and I'm gonna turn that three-quarter inch plywood into two one-piece outer covers um, so I'm not doing an inner cover and an outer cover. Uh, no real need for that. I'm going to turn that piece of plywood into a single piece outer cover um, that will work as an inner cover and an outer cover together. Um, so the next video, stay tuned and uh, we'll put that uh, board into a lid for those beehives.